Hallelujah. Let us have a conversation. The risen Christ or the resurrected Christ. Where did it all start and why? Why was it why was it, it so important for him to be born at the first place? Because if we can't answer his birth, we won't be able to answer his death and his resurrection. Why was it important for him to be born? Many people all over the world are celebrating this day. Many are celebrating it differently according to their beliefs and their religious systems. However, we are not going to celebrate it according to our belief or our religious system. We are going to celebrate this day according to what Jesus Christ meant, it for, meant for it to be celebrated. Hallelujah. Which will ultimately be the basis and the foundation of our belief system. Hallelujah. When the angel approached Mary in Luke, Mary was just an innocent girl minding her own business. She did not go to a 40-day fast, fasting to be the mother of Messiah, Jesus Christ. She was minding her own business. Little did she know that her forefathers, when they were saved from Egypt, it was for this purpose. She didn't know that she was the chosen one. But the obedience of her forefathers, when Moses instructed them to slaughter the lamb and put the blood on the lintels, Make, made it possible for the angel of the Lord to locate her. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you are getting that one. The obedience of her forefathers, of her fathers, made it impossible possible for the angel Gabriel to locate Mary. Because she was at the right place at the right time. Had she has been in Egypt the Messiah was not yet, was not supposed to be born in Egypt. Prophet uh, 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 Isaiah mentioned what? Israel and Nazareth. There's no way in prophecy that Messiah was to be born in Egypt. So it was important for the first Passover to be instituted. It was important for the Israelites to listen to Moses and follow him until the promised land. He didn't get there. Joshua finish the process. Hallelujah. So, if we can link up the process, God has already started the process that my children will be redeemed from Egypt. And after that, a the redeemer will be born. Hallelujah. But why should, the, why should the redeemer be born? What was the purpose of the birth of Jesus Christ? We need to also look into that. The angel said to Mary, Shalom, you highly favored woman. I'm paraphrasing it. And woman, Mary was surprised. What kind of greeting is this? And the angel said to Mary, you will give birth to a son. His name shall be Jesus because many shall be saved through him. And Mary was surprised. However, she said, Father, not my will, your will. So again, we see Mary surrendering to, to the will of God. But before we can get into that, why did it all start? Let us, go back to, let us go back to Genesis. God started a process in Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1. It said, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And then again, we're going to ask a question. Where was God if he created heaven and earth? If heaven did not exist, where was he? That one will, will answer it in one of the Thursdays as we preach. And God, as God started the process, and again, days later, he said to the, the Jesus Christ himself, 
and to the Holy Spirit. He said, Jesus, Holy Spirit, let us make men according to our image and likeness. Let them have dominion over everything here on earth. On earth. So, God the Father, God the Word, he was not yet the Son. He became the Son for the purpose of salvation. Can you, can you go to 1 John 5, 8? I want us to take this journey. 1 John 5, 7. Yeah, 1 John 5, 7. I, w- I want you to see the three who agreed. Nobody's in a hurry this, this, uh, this morning. Eh? If you're in a hurry, take out your phone. Cancel your appointment. I'm, t- I'm giving you an opportunity. Take out your phone, your WhatsApp, cancel the appointment. Tell them that today Jesus is coming first. First John 5, 7. Are you there? What does he say? There are three that bear witness where? The what? The word, not the son. Eh? How, how is the word spelled? It's with a capital letter, eh? And what? And the Holy Spirit. So these are the three that agreed that let us make men according to our image. So the word, the Holy Spirit and the Father saying our combination is going to give birth to someone powerful. I think that's something that people miss here. These three are saying, the Father saying, my image. And the Word, which Jesus saying, my image. And the Holy Spirit is saying, my image. Do do you understand that? Can I repeat that again? The Father is saying what? My image. The the, The Word, Jesus Christ, is saying what? My image. The Holy Spirit is saying what? My image. And they say, let us make men according to our image. Meaning, the original you hmm, carried the likeness of the Father, the likeness of the Son, who is the Word. You know, the Word that you read, the Bible, looks like you. Oh, religion won't allow you to understand that. When you say, I'm quoting the word, what does the word of God says? You are saying, what do I say? <laughs> oh, Because it was your language. Are we together? You became him. The word became your language. The Holy Spirit became your breath, your power. Are we together? No, no, no. Church, if you are together, you, 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 you are too not excited. <laughs> if there is such an English. I want, first you, I want you to be revealed to you because if you don't get this, you won't understand today. Many have rushed in Resurrection Sunday and all that, but no. You understand this, you will know what was resurrected. It's not about the celebration. It's about what's in you. So, can we read again 1 John 5? I can't see 1 John 5, 5, 7. It just only says there are three that testify. No, no, no. NIV has been diluted. So, you don't read NIV. Please take it to something else. Say, there are three that testify. If you understand this, First John 5, 8, 5, 7. Can you read it again? I want you, I want you to read it yourself loud. Read it, read it aloud for yourself. Read it. What are you saying? That they bear witness where? Who are they? The word and what? Okay, it's fine. Let us go to Genesis 1 1. You know what Genesis 1 1 says? 
I want, I want you to see something. In the beginning, heaven and earth. Okay, the three are bearing witness where? Why was heaven created? And earth simultaneously. You must understand that. In the beginning, God created what? Heaven and what? And earth. Okay? And 1 John 5, 8 is saying, there are three that bear witness way in heaven. Who are they? The Father, the Word, and who? And the Holy Spirit. So, Heaven and earth was created for who? For who? For us. And our image is being witnessed where? In heaven. For whose sake? Oh. Yeah, ne? <laughs> Can we talk the Bible and not talk religion? Hmm? Can we talk the Bible? And Jesus Christ, they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. What did he say? Our Father who art where? In heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done. Here on earth as it is. Oh, we are getting somewhere. Now you understand. So now, your image, your image God said, let us make men according to our image. What does that give you? Rulership. Dominion. Power. Authority. He said, let us make men according to our image and what? And likeness. Likeness is important. Likeness is the character. When Jesus Christ came, he refused to live according to the likeness of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, their character. He started his own character, what people call religion. He said, whatever that I do, as, as my father at to heaven is work, I look at him and do what? And, and do what? And work on earth. Are we together? As my father speak, I do what? I speak. I hear, therefore I speak. So, you, as a child of God, your responsibility is not to speak your mind. You, because your mind, the contents of your mind, automatically forms your character. When the character is flawed, the likeness of God is removed. Are we together? That's why Romans 12, two, what does Romans 12, 2 say Renew your mind. You do what? You renew your mind. What does what, 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 what the renew your mind do to, to you? It puts you back in heaven. Okay. It puts you back where? You, you begin to think like who? Like God and who? The word and who? The Holy Spirit. So when you speak, Thinking like God, what does the Holy Spirit do? He acts. He empowers. Let us go to Genesis 1.3. He said, the, the Spirit of the Lord was hovering upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be. And it was. Meaning, without the Holy Spirit, there is no action. Why didn't the Holy Spirit change things? Because he was hovering upon the face of the waters. Even though the Bible says it was chaotic, but he was still hovering. He was waiting for what? The word. Because these three agree what? As one. Sometimes chaos in your life is not the absence of the Holy Spirit. In the absence of the word, agreement, the will of God. Are we, are we going somewhere? 
I will have it. I want to put it to you that we're not going to finish this today. This is another foundation. We're still going to continue with this. Because if we don't lay this foundation, Christianity becomes another religion. And you have powerless Christians. Even the little cats, demons come and play in your window. They go, well, well. You, you, you wake up and pray in tongues. Fire, fire. You're fighting against the cat because of fear. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let us go back to, to the word. So now that you understand who you are, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. Remember that? There are three in heaven that agree. But where did they agree first before heaven was created? We'll come to that one. But why did they choose to agree in heaven? It's important to understand that. Why did God the Father, God the Word, and God the Holy Spirit choose to have the agreement in heaven? Not anywhere else. Because they were not in heaven before. They chose to heaven to agree in heaven for, for my sake and your sake. Because Jesus Christ said, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Meaning, there is you. We, we, we spoke about the image of God. Your mirror you who is image from God in heaven is living here on earth in the body. Now you understand yourself, ne? So your body is not, you have never seen you. You have only seen the body that carries you. You have never seen you. So the mirrored you, who is the image of the Father, the image of the Word, the image of the Holy Spirit, is inside your body. Habitating here on earth, doing what? Reflecting the heavenlies here on earth so that your body can move like wise. That's why there are three that agree. They are choosing to agree in heaven, not anywhere else. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. When he's done, he said, let them hope dominion over the bird that flies on earth and what? In heaven. Who are they? Us. So, that is you. Before, before you can talk about resurrection, understand this part of you. That's the reason why Satan is called the deceiver of the brethren. Why? He wants us to focus on on our bodies. I'm your, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I, I love clothes. I love good things. I love everything. But our focus should be. Should, our focus should. Sorry, say my focus is me, the inside me, the me that I don't know, looking like the word that I know. Do you understand? That's why, that's why the demon said to the sons of Sceva, uh, Paul we know, Jesus we know, but who are you? So, there are some people who don't have the presence in the spiritual realm. <laughs> you are not known. You are not known in the spiritual realm. Because the, you are not reflecting the image of God the Father, the Word. So how, how do you reflect the image? You go through the Word. No one comes to the Father except through me. You understand? So, if you understand, the, so our resurrection today will also be the re-establishment of our presence in the spiritual realm. And not only that, your authority in the spiritual realm must also be re-established. Because if you are not known, you don't have authority. That's the reason why people can stand by the road and do like this. 
you choose whether you're going to stop or not. But if somebody wearing a uniform and step in and say, you stop. Authority. Some of us have been hiking the spiritual realm for too long. We are dead. I mean, not resurrected with Christ. We are getting there. We have been hiking in the spiritual realm. And others, are just, they, just, they just stop. Satan, wrong direction. Not my family's way. Somewhere else. Authority. There are three that agree. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And you are in them. Image and likeness. Are we together? We're we fine with that one. Eh? Okay, now let's move on. So God then, Genesis 2, 7, he formed the man from the dust. Your body. Your body, Genesis 2, 7, your body is formed from what? From the dust. And what, what was he creating? He's creating the house for the image. And we are taking care of the house of the image more than the image. <laughs> Genesis 2, 7. Can you please go? To, are you sleeping? Genesis 2, 7. It must be reflected there. And the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So, you are living because the dust has received the Holy Spirit. The Ruha breath of the Lord is what's called the breath of life. The, it, I, I think we, we, we should take this journey slowly. Ne? And man became what? Say a living soul. Before the breath of life, what was man? A dead soul, dust. Are we together? And why did God breathe into the man the Holy Spirit? So the precedent is being completed. Completed. The Father speaks. He released the word. The word, the Holy Spirit forms everything. The Holy Spirit was even involved in the formation of a man. But for the life, he said, you, Holy Spirit, go and be his breath. I'm breathing you inside him. I'm breathing you. You are going to be inside the man. And man will become a living soul. Why soul? For the process of relating with the earth realm. So your emotions... Your liking, not liking, your anger, not anger, your happiness, everything. They all reside in the realm of soul. But the person that you are a living soul connected with God. And Satan saw that. He said, no, 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 no. Let us go to Revelation 12, 7. I want you to see something. Revelation 12, 7. I want you to see something before I can say it. You are tempting me, Mr. To play something else. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth. And his angels were with him. So, the one who was cast out from heaven is looking at God creating a heavenly being with an earthly body. Mark that one. God is creating what? A heavenly being with an earthly body. Why do we call a human being a heavenly being? Because God said, let us create man 
according to what? To our image. So, the image of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit are where? Where are they? First John 5, 7, they say they are where? They are in heaven. So, God puts an heavenly being with an earthly body in the garden. Is it making, and Satan is looking at the heavenly being. He said, with my millions of demons, I cannot defeat that person. Even if I would like to, I cannot take the garden out of, out of that person. Because this person, this heavenly being, has been given authority over the earth and the world at large. So that's what I want because I don't have authority in heaven. Satan talking. I don't, I don't, I either have authority on earth. So, but I want that authority. Because these heavenly beings, the way they carry so much power, if I can hijack that power, I can use them against themselves. And, and, and in the process, use them against God. Do you understand where we are going now? He said, the way they carry much what power, remember let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over all that. So, these heavenly beings with earthly bodies carry dominion. So, this is the dominion that I want. But even if I want with my millions of demons, I cannot go and attack Adam and Eve. They are too powerful because they are like God. If they can say, Satan, die, I will die. So what do I do? Imagine this. Satan and his millions of demons are looking at two people. They can't touch them. Because they carry the heavenly mandate. And he was there listening. And God said, Satan, not, not Satan, Adam and Eve, everything is yours. There is that tree in the middle of the garden. You touch it. There is something called death. But it's powerless. It's next to you, but it's powerless. No, you can even step on it. It's called death. It's powerless. It's there in the garden. You can step on it. It's powerless. It cannot do anything to you. It's there in the garden. But the moment you touch that tree, it will overpower you. So in other ways, obedience gives you authority over death. And Satan heard that one. He said, what? There is something that can deal with these people. Death. Only if I can get the people to activate death. He could not activate it himself. There's something that you have to understand. Satan could not activate death without the power of the heavenly being. Hallelujah. Are we together? He could not do what? Activate death. Death is there in the garden. God spoke about it. If you eat this fruit, you'll surely die. Time goes by. Death is there, powerless, sitting by the corner there, miserable. Satan is there looking at death. He can't activate it. He doesn't have power. He's looking at the heavenly being who has power to activate death. He said, I must find ways. To make him activate death. Let me deceive him. And he deceives Eve. You know the story. To cut the long story short. Eve took the fruit. eat it. She didn't die. Because there was no agreement. Remember. <laughs> you need to understand this. Why? Eve, Adam and Eve are a product of agreement. Let us make men. According to our image. So it was a product of agreement. So Eve could not die without the agreement of Adam. Had she ate it alone, she would still be alive. But the moment she gave it to Adam, there was agreement. Death was activated. Only agreement can activate death. I, I, I want you to, to write that for me. Only agreement can activate death. Only agreement can activate death in your finances, in your family, 
in your health, in every, in your, and only agreement. So be careful whom you agree with. So death is activated. Ah, uh, when Satan saw that death was activated, he was excited, and God was so devastated. For the first time in the creation, God is disconnected with the heavenly being. The heavenly being does not know what is happening in heaven anymore to implement on earth. The heavenly being is lost. Death took over. I want, I want to put it to you this way this morning. That most of us, our lives are not miserable. We are not lost. We are not poor. We are not sick. We are not hungry. We just need to be connected back to life. You know, there is something that Satan has instituted on earth called credit. Credit, let me tell you credit. What cre credit is the Babylonian system that was created by the Babylonian to live independently of God. So that mankind can continue living in deception, believing that they are doing well outside God, knowing that eternally they are condemned. So God becomes so miserable. Where is the heavenly being? Adam and Eve, where are you? They ran and hide. Why did you hide? I heard your voice. Hey, you are the image of the word. You hear the word and you hide. Do you get it? Because the word, when the word is lost inside you, when the law word is gone, you hide from God. When there is no meditation of the word of God, you hide from God. You stop praying. You stop giving. You stop fellowshipping. You hide from God. Why? Even though God can speak, Adam is still running even to this day. Because he's dead. But to fast forward, because I gave you the longest foundation ever, to fast forward, God says, no, my heavenly being must be restored back. He looked at the three in heaven. He looked at the three in heaven, the, the, the Holy Spirit and the Word. And the Word says, prepare a body for me. Remember you said, the seed of a woman will bruise the head of a serpent. Prepare a body for me. I want to go and live like the heavenly being. I, I want them, I want to be the image again. I want them to see how to live in heaven through me, Christ. Christ is born. When he come on earth, he found sickness. Healing takes place. He found people maimed. Healing takes place. He found the blind who cannot see. He said, no, no, no. No, mm -mm -mm. You, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. No, my friend, in heaven you can see. I don't know what happened here on earth, but in heaven, when I look in heaven, you can see. I, according to my report from heaven, you can see. You cannot be blind. So receive your sight as it is in heaven. Receive your sight as it is in heaven. And if I'm, and if I'm the lame, it's working. No, my friend. Why are you working like that? No, man. In heaven, you're working properly. Why, why is it like that? No, man. Re 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 receive your healing. He stand up. He walks. And if I'm somebody dead, so okay, you died in 2017. In heaven, it's 2030. You still have work to do. Between 2017 and 2030, there is work for you. Rise up. Arise. Live. As it is in heaven. So he began to reflect heaven on earth. And they call it the ministry. 
Acts 10, 38, says how God anointed the Lord Jesus Christ with power and with, with the Holy Spirit. Who went about what? Doing good. Healing all those who were oppressed by the devils. How did the devils came? Because of the disconnection with life. Are we together? And Jesus in his earthly walk, he's in consultation with the father. The father as he says, who are you? Who gave you this permission to do this? He said, my father in heaven. Because he's living a heavenly life on earth. Are we together? So your life, whom are you consulting? When you make decisions, whom are you consulting? We make decisions, we consult ourselves. And when we're in trouble, we call upon the Lord. God, Satan is attacking me. No, he's not attacking you. You had a conversation with him. You agreed with him that this is what you are going to do with your life. It is not an attack, it's an agreement. So, how do we terminate that agreement, God? Repent. If you confess your sins and move away from all right, I'm, I'll be quick and just to forgive you and restore you to life. So, Jesus walks on earth. He begins to challenge a well-established system established by the devil. He's, he's challenging left, right, and center. They begin to conspire that this one must die. Legally, they know that they are walking the will of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes your enemies can bless you thinking that they are kissing you. Sometimes the enemies can bring you bread thinking that they are bringing you hunger. So Jesus... I love you, Jesus. I love you. Can you just say, Jesus, I love you? Just, just, just say it three times. Can, can, can you just open your mouth? Just say, Jesus, I love you. Just say it three times. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I love you, Jesus. He walks on earth. He's looking at what's happening in heaven in comparison with the affairs on earth. Others reject him. Others accept him. This is happening still today. Let's fast forward to the Garden of Gethsemane. He went there. He said, Father, not my will, but your will. Because that's where the will was sold. As we said on Friday, that the will of God connects you with the word of God. When the will of God connects you with the word of God, your spirit man responds better to the word because of the will of God. Outside the will of God, your spirit man has no authority and power to respond to the will of God. And the word of God. So, first thing that Jesus restores is the will of God upon mankind. But man is still dead. Man is still spiritually dead. Because God said somebody must die. So we need a substitution. Who will die for man so that man can live? And who will live? Who will defeat death so that man can also defeat death? Because as if, if someone with a heavenly authority, can come and give life to man through his death, that then man will be able to live. And God looked around and said that no one was capable of giving life back to man except heaven, except God himself, God the Son. And Jesus came down. As he said, he said, I'm going to die. He lived, he did, he does that. In the garden, they beat him. Can I tell you something? Every step of the way of Via de la Rosa, 
When he was walking to Golgotha, it was the walk of men. It was the sinful walk of men. He was carrying all the heaviness of the life of men. He fell three times on the way. Until Simeon came and helped him to carry the cross forward. But man is still dead. Hallelujah. If you go to 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 6. It says, for I delivered to you 15, 3, verse 3 up to verse 6. Therefore, I deliver to you first all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, that's Peter. Then, then by the twelve, after he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained at the presence, but some have fallen asleep. I just want us to see that Christ died for our sins. Still, in his death for our sins, we died. For the first time, somebody is dying for a dead man. For the first time, somebody is willing to reconnect the dead man with the living God. No, you don't allow Satan to deceive you. He cannot treat you as if you are a fallen man. No. You are reconnected with the living Christ through his death. And Jesus died on the cross. Something happened that has never happened in his life before. God turned his back on him. The moment all the sins of the world, of all humankind, came upon Jesus Christ, God, because of his holiness, could not look at the cross. He turned his back. For the first time in Jesus' existence, there is no more the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. They are all disconnected with him. Why? The disconnection that man suffered, Jesus has to suffer it. And he cried, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabbatan, why have you forsaken me? That, you know, that, is, that is not a song. That is the most important and crucial part of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. When he was forsaken, it was us who were forsaken first. Jesus has to be forsaken. God has to turn his back on him so that mankind can be reconnected back to him. He died for our sins. And God could not look but that couldn't stop all the sins being poured upon Jesus Christ. He carried all the sins of the earth, of humankind, because even the word that was rebellious, everything, all the sins came upon him. They were poured upon him. And God said, now that you took all the sins, you may now die. As Jesus is dying, we were dying with him in that death. And they carried him. To the grave. If you go to First Corinthians 15, 14. I want you to see a short statement. First Corinthians 15, 14. What does it say? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is what? 
And our faith is what? Why? How can a dead person have faith? How can a dead person preach? How can those who have died spiritually have faith and preach? Ah, pastor, what, what do you mean? Abraham had faith and it was considered him righteousness. Yes, he was a conduit to where, to, where, to where we are right now. It was a part of process. Before you eat pap, there should be mill meal. On the third day, I love this. This is my best part of the sermon. On the first day, on the third day, Saturday, there is quietness, there is stillness. The disciples don't know what to do. They've locked themselves in the house somewhere. Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene woke up, ran to the grave. I'm not going to read the story for you. You have read it several times on Resurrection Sunday. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to go to it. She ran to the grave. When she got there, the tomb is open. Nobody inside the grave. She went to Jesus Christ, not knowing that it was him. Say, thinking that it was a gardener. Please tell me where you put his body. Where did you put his body? So that we might bury him ourselves. And Jesus Christ said, Mary, the word ignited the knowledge in Mary. The moment Jesus said, Mary, her eyes were opened. She saw Jesus Christ. It takes the word to open your eyes and see the master. Are we together? Be because you, 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 you can't live in confusion thinking that Jesus has forsaken you. And Jesus went and the angel said to Mary, why do you seek the living among the dead? Let me bring you back home. Revelation 5. Revelation chapter 1, I mean, verse 5 to 6. There is something that I want to see. I want you to see. So Jesus is alive. But why is he alive? It's important for us to understand that. It starts, and from Jesus, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. Let us stop there. The firstborn from the dead. Why is he the firstborn from the dead? I mean, I cannot be the firstborn of the dead, no. We were dead. When Jesus died, we died with him. He rose up first to become the firstborn from the dead. And as he rose up, we rose up with him. The death that we suffered from the Garden of Eden does not, has no authority over us anymore. We are now well back and connected with God the Master through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. So he's the one who rose up from the dead first. He has became our firstborn, our big brother. And because he's the firstborn from the dead, what does that make us? It connects us back to God. Can you look at the scripture? Acts 17, 29. Acts 17, 29. Don't worry, we are almost done. Others say, Pastor, don't stop. <laughs> there is still more time and more days. We're still going to unravel this. We, we need to eat this word slowly. You know, when you eat in a rush, 
Why does it say Acts 70, 29? Therefore, since we are what? We are what? We are what? What is, so can you see now? We are back now into being the offspring of God because Jesus rose from the dead. We are now called the children of God. Okay, what is the offspring of a dog? It's a dog. Okay, what is the offspring of a cat? It's a cat, ne? What is the offspring of God? Let us make men according to our image, our likeness. Can you, are you getting it now? Can you getting it now? Say I am the image of God in word, in power, and authority. I am what God says I am. It's important. Who names your children? You. When God says to you, you are a victor. You are what? A victor. When God says to you, you are prosperous. You are what? You are prosperous. When God says to you, you are the healed of the Lord. You are what? You are healed because what? You are his offspring. How? Because Jesus died. When he rose again on the third day, you became the offspring of God. Because he's the firstborn from the dead. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Look at you. I want to look at you. Say, I've never seen myself before. But I'm going to look at myself. Open your Bible. Look at the word. That's you. When I say look at you, you open your Bible, you look at the word, that's you. You are created according to his image. Then when you have that relationship with the word, the word becomes flesh in you. You are able to execute what the word of God says. Can you all stand up? Can you all stand up? Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. In other words, he was not talking about the life of breathing or not breathing. No. He's referring to the divine nature. Okay, let us go to the word again. Let us go to the word. Excellent. 29. Let us go to the word. You will see. The word must answer what? The word. Acts 20, 29. What does it say? Since therefore we are what? So we all know to think what? That the divine nature is what? Or, or stone. No. Something shared by, by art. No. It is by revelation. I want you to look at the divine, the word divine nature. How is it written? Eh? It's capital letters. Ne? It's, re it's referring to, to God. So you need to look at your likeness like God. It's not something that is far away from you like silver and gold. It's within you. When you look at yourself, use your divine eyes. See what God sees about you. God is looking at a warrior. You are looking at yourself like, 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 like a locust. They, they were big giants and were like grasshoppers to them. God is saying, I've given you the land. But you are saying, no, we are grasshoppers. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your hands. Let us go to Romans 8, 11. With, you, know, you, 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 you look at the screen now. You don't open your Bible. That's the reason why we have this. You look at the screen now. Romans 8, 11. That the same spirit. Romans 8, 11.
I'll read it myself because the systems guys are on a ghost low today. Maybe there is a salary dispute that I'm not aware of. <laughs> but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwelt in you, him who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. I want you to say, Father, let the same spirit say, say Father, let the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwell in my spirit and give life to my spirit man and my mortal body. Say, Father, let the same spirit that who rose Christ from the dead dwell in me and give life to my spirit man and my mortal body. L look at the scripture. I want you to look at yourself. C can, you, can you see yourself? But if the spirit of him that raised that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelt in you. He that raised up Jesus from the dead will, shall also give life to your mortal body through his spirit. So when you look at this scripture, where do you go back to? Genesis 2, 7. And God breathed the breath of life. And the man became what? A living being. Say from today onwards. Through the resurrection of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have received life and life in abundance. Say, Satan, your power and authority over my life is over, is finished. You cannot make me sick anymore. You cannot make me poor anymore. For in him I live for in God I live, in God I move, and I have my being. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. 